Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. As always, I'm Seth. Has not changed. I am here with Fred Mather. He is the co-founder of Avi as well. He is the chairman of Pavilion, which is a great group online of senior level executives, entrepreneurs. Um, he And he founded that he was part of it with um, Sam Jacobs, who was on the program previously. Hey, Fred, how's it going? Doing well, thanks, sir. Yes. Nice he also has a great so British accent, on. too. He also has a great yeah, British like, accent, yeah. so. That's the only reason I've had some sort of a career, by the way, so. Oh, everyone loves a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, you have been around a lot. You have had some exits. You've had some IPOs. You've been in and out entrepreneurship. And I wanted to have you on the show because... You also help other entrepreneurs along the way. You advise them. You say, hey, here's what I learned. Here's what worked. Here's what didn't work and all that stuff. So, Fred, give me a little bit of a background on how you this all got started, this whole journey got started for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, my background has always sort of been all on the commercial side, so variety of sales positions. Yeah, in the UK, I moved here to the, the fine country of the USA in in The fine country, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. well, as, as an American, I, I laugh at that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we were big travelers, and we were chasing a bit of a dream. We didn't necessarily come yeah. with a plan. We had two young kids. We thought we'd enjoy it for a few years, and here we are, twenty five years later. It's funny. I think when I reflect on my career, I would say that. One, I've learned a lot about what I now do in Pavilion that is probably different in terms of how I help and advise people. I think for myself, I probably could advise myself a little bit better. I didn't necessarily have a, a full plan. I, I took the jobs that came and I got lucky yeah. and I hopefully I applied myself. I did okay out of it. I was in operating roles for the better part of 25 years. Wow. Stopped working and became, I suppose, a true entrepreneur, Seth, in about 2017. But yeah, I've been fortunate in many ways, both financially and in the career. And I would say that I've reached a better stage of happiness professionally right now. I've always met brilliant people, thoroughly enjoyed a lot of the jobs I did. But I would say I was more content and financially driven than entirely happy in a lot of those roles. I feel in a very good place right now. Well, that's great. And that's a great thing, you know, about entrepreneurship. I mean, there are ups and downs. There is terror at times. <laughs> But you're also in, in charge of your own destiny, and it's rewarding that way. At least that's how I feel. So let's go. Let's talk a little bit about Pavilion. I think there's like well, you, I think somewhere I think in the bio you sent me there's like ten thousand members of this of this group. It's insane. It's and they're all it's international. And so how did you get started with Pavilion? I mean, I guess you met Sam in New York. Yeah, I mean, it started as a dinner club. I mean, the yeah. simplicity of back then of just 
getting a group of people together to talk about Imagine that. personal and professional things in a forum, often over dinner, is somewhat still of what's at the heart of this group today. 10,000 members, actually, is what we're now up to. Wow. And so I attended those dinners, and we were a pretty small group for a few years. And then, you know, Sam came out of an operating role roughly around the same time as we as me and we found each other i was sort of deciding what i was going to do next i got into consulting and actually did some initial work with him before i went to advise well founded that with jess wilkieson um a fellow pavilion member and he gave up the consulting and went full-time into what is now um establishing the the membership and it's pretty um, wild yeah yeah i think other than the one-to-one and the group sessions it was all really about coaching and uh, we ran small cohorts of associate members and gave them some help and support on their careers and where they were going. I evolved into two things. One, I wrote a lot of the executive compensation guide. And one of the reasons mm. I've been fortunate to get some half decent exits is probably because of the structure of what I negotiated on those contracts. So I took oh, yeah. what I learned there and applied it into the pavilion and alongside a few others become a little bit of a guru around how to navigate that test it that's, that's a big thing get the yeah. best package and to protect you frankly as well so i do a lot yeah. of that and then at the beginning of covid sam asked me if i would uh, help people get back into work there wasn't really a brief sam said hey listen let's set up this thing called on the bench and let's see what we can do and yeah. i threw myself at it and have been doing it now for three years and i have to tell you Seth, it's one of the most rewarding things that i've ever done in my life it's been a wonderful chance to give back at this stage in my career and to make any type of contribution, small or large, to people who yeah. are in need at a place or time where they are seeking employment, a uh, good thing. So yeah, those are the two main tracks that I'm on inside the building. It's a crazy time for the economy. And on the bench, I, like, I heard about it. I'm like, that's great to know that it's there. I've told a few people that have been like going on to the bench in Pavilion. And I know, like, go check out the, the on the bench area because it's, I feel like you need support. Like my wife was at, 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 during the pandemic, she got a job. During the pandemic, she was laid off from that job. And then she obviously had to decompress and all that stuff. But I, I find that you need support when you're, because it's a job. It's, a thank, it's even more of a thankless job looking for a job. Because some people string you along. And it's just nice to have a group of people saying, hey, we're going through the same thing. You can do this. Here's some tips on this. Here's a tip on your resume. Here's all that good stuff. And I think that's really important to have. And I think it's very beneficial in a group like this of sales leaders, incoming sales leaders. Like there's kids in this group, not kids. I say I'm 41. I'm calling them kids. But there's like young millennials, actually now even Generation Z even, I think are, yeah, they're in the workforce now. So Generation Z and, and young millennials are kind of at the beginning of their careers. And I think it's great. And they should definitely check out Pavilion. Good stuff. And I, I think the job hunt is a deep process these days, particularly for executives in this current environment, as you just yeah. touched on, Seth, it's even harder. It's very much in the control of employers right now. And a lot of people historically tend to be a little reactive when they think about a job search and that may bear fruit, but typically you have to put a lot of work in upfront, do a lot of research. You have to be really proficient and ready for the path ahead to get that new job. And yeah. I feel that what we've been able to do other than that emotional point you make is yeah. to provide a consolidated, complete curriculum, if you will, of Ooh, where you yeah. can go to for all the elements of what kind of speakers and a ton of content that's new too. frameworks. Yeah. Yeah. It's so been, it's been really well, cool. Yeah. It's needed really as cool. well, because if you think about it, when you're, you've been in a job for five, 10, 15 years, even three years. You're, you come out and you're a little rusty on the job search. Your resume needs updating. Now you need a website. Like now you need to have an online presence. And when you're at a company, a lot of times you don't focus on that. It's a whole new ball game from when I, back when I was a, a, a plebe in the corporate cog. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Support for this show and all the other shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Momento. If you have your own podcast, you know how hard it is to produce and get all the cool little clips out and all that stuff. Promoting is half the battle. What if you could upload your episode, video or audio and have AI pull out all the best moments for you to use in social media? Well, you can with Memento. Upload the video or audio, review the recommended clips, 
Click the couple of buttons, customize the colors, fonts, and hit save. Instantly, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook, and LinkedIn posts all materialize before your eyes. All with video and audio embedded for dynamic promotions that drive people to the episode. And the AI kicks out show notes even, transcripts, and even social media captions. All you have to do is review and post them. Because you listen to this show, you get a free trial of Memento to test for yourself. Go to bit.ly slash Memento MPN and sign up today. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Memento M-P-N. So Fred, what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Because you've done the, you've been the cog, you've been the executive, and now you're doing the entrepreneur thing. What's the best thing that you see as being an entrepreneur now? Well, definitely having freedom set. I do enjoy the fact that I've probably got a lot better sort of work-life balance now than I had. Yeah. The hamster wheel of the 24-7 startup world was thrilling at times, but now I can do what I want when I want. I've got a wonderful partner in Jess, as I just mentioned. I think on the consulting side, the thing that's most appealing is you get to play in a lot of different places. And we've done yeah. everything from work with traditional engineering businesses all the way through the SaaS. And we've just the whole variety, stage, yeah. industry, profile of company. And humans are the biggest factor in all projects, not least of which consulting, because what can be done by who? their willingness to change and adapt and all that kind of stuff. So I like the pond with which uh, we play in and uh, it's been a lot of fun. We, we picked up on some things that Sam had been doing. We apply these um, diagnostic assessments to the work we do. So it's a very, wow. the process yeah. is super immersive. It gets us very close to the business, which is important okay. to be credible when you're making recommendations, it's analytical, which I think people like particularly in this environment. So mm. It's been really good. And uh, we have worked with a lot of companies here, South America, over in the UK, where Jess uh, is based. She's an American married to. Yeah, to I always thought that was funny. When I first met you, you said the Brits in the US and the and Americans in, the, in, in Britain. Love it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We sort of compare those. She's a little bit more recent over there than I am here. But uh, yeah, it's kind of amusing. And it's, cool. all been, it's all been culminating for me, evolving into possibly raising a small VC farm. Ooh. And we got hooked up with a company a couple of years ago uh, called ATGY, Jason Shapiro. And he was on the venture side, working maybe more of a sort of principal mm -hmm. venture partner type role. And he set up a financial consulting firm with, with many components, but a key one around helping startups with their readiness to raise capital. They need and so that, he yeah. and I went through a little bit of a courtship and uh, we decided to try and raise a fund that it's going to be an operator driven fund, which is not... Mm -hmm. Incredibly novel. There are a few around. Stage yeah. two is a form of that, I think, GTM fund. Mm -hmm. A few others have raised successfully recently. And we believe that we can put uh, a lot of money to work. But most important, we can apply our expertise as commercial leaders to do some value mm -hmm. creation type work for these companies beyond the check that we write. And so that's a just that's another example idea. of the freedom, the entrepreneurship media, do something like that. So. And I love that it's for you, it's more, it's as much, yeah, you put money in. Yes, you get your return on your investment eventually. Hopefully, something's going to happen. <laughs> and, but you're also about giving and you're about helping and advising. And a lot of people, especially during COVID and before that, everyone was like, VCs are just in it for the money. If you find the right VC or the right angel, they're in it for the money. Like money does talk, but they're also in it to help you succeed. And I think that that's when I've, I'm working with a startup now and I, I keep telling them, I'm like, look, we have to find the right people. I mean, as much as we need to find the right people in the company for the cultural fit, we need to find the right investors for the cultural fit that believe in the mission and all that stuff. So on the flip side, what keeps you up at night? Well, kid, well my kids, of course, worrying about them. They're grown yeah. up, but, uh, you know, this, they still have parental, uh, breathful days. So then for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, another state of the economy, uh, is worrying. I don't want to be naive, but I'm a little confused as to exactly what is going on right now. I think we all uh, are. There is kind of the, there's these alternate universes of the tech side and then the rest of the world that, or the rest of the yeah. country, if you will, that seems to be holding up so, somewhat better, not to get into a testy path, but I'm concerned politically about what's going on in this country on a lot of levels. Yeah. Listen, whenever you move or wherever you leave, Frank, live, frankly, there's always trade-offs. Yes. Um, you know, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time in the States. It's a, it's a country of opportunity. And for a salesperson, um, 
was it was always enlightening to me when I first worked for a American company in London before I moved here that sales was at the forefront of companies. And you yeah. know, when I worked in the UK prior, you was like a little bit of a no, deep in the background. Sales is the unspoken role inside wow. the company, and so being able to thrive in that function has been uh, been really really wonderful for me here. Um, but um, hey, listen, you know. Uh, we're ridiculously fortunate. I have stuff to worry about, but compared with most, I should consider myself incredibly fortunate. We live in New York. Um, our kids are healthy and well. My wife too. We have a wonderful family around ourselves. So uh, yeah, yeah. Let and, you can, and you can also escape New York, which is nice too. So, so you can go to your house up in Connecticut if you need to <laughs> to get away from the hustle and bustle of New York. Because I mean, New York's a lot. I mean, I'm a Philadelphia guy, and Philadelphia is a lot. When I go to New York, I'm like, I need to decompress for like three days. It's a lot. But it's going to be oh, it's a so. it, Oh, 100%. You know, it's a, it's a sharp elbow city for sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We, we, it's a material city, too. My daughter always reminded me, I can never afford to live here, Dad. You know, she saves me. But if you have the faintest hint of interest in anything yeah. cultural, arts wise, and we're big oh, into great. music, we go to all the museums. I mean, there's so much to do here. The other thing, actually, is I think people forget how convenient the city of New York is. I mean, obviously, it's there's five boroughs. We live in Manhattan. I mean, you anywhere in 10 minutes. I mean, it's London's a vast city by comparison. And so I think you'll enjoy the immediacy of everything that's available to you here. Um, so, the subway yeah, is great. I, I'm it actually... smells terrible, but <laughs> it's not about the subway. People knock the New York subway, but there's nothing quite like it. I mean, the tubes over in, in London is good as well. But like New York City subway, for better or for worse, is the lifeblood, really. You can get anywhere, anywhere with that, with that system. Yeah. It I mean, it, it doesn't it, catch on fire like the metro in D.C. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is a city in New York where they don't really invest a lot in the infrastructure. I always, I always talk about the fact they need an Olympics or a World Cup. I think there's actually a World Cup partially coming here. So then they're yeah. forced to put the investment into improvements in the infrastructure. I mean, you know, they put like five billion into LaGuardia to improve it, but they don't put a dollar into the way, the way that you get to the airport. You know, it's just, oh god, it's a it's, it's, a, it's a, a murder game there. And it's it's just forget a, about JFK. You, forget about JFK. Oh yeah, I, 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 exactly. But you know, this is this, this, these are these are small criticisms. There's so much to be uh, enjoying in a crazy, wonderful place like New York. It is. It is. So, what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? This can be physical or metaphysical. Go as deep as you want. Bear with me all the time. Um, well, a book probably. You know, yes. it's funny. You know, when, when you're on these shows, you talk to people. They always sort of want to find out what you know current business books you've read. I'm a little bit more of a fiction reader, to be honest with oh, you. I mean, well. I do read, of course, business books. I read a lot of articles. I'm currently reading uh, the new Emil Toll, Toll's book, uh, the. Uh, Lincoln Highway, and um, yeah. I'm about to read uh, Bono's uh, book about his life, his biography, which I learned is brilliant. He's uh, a so sitting so, guy, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, really. Um, and I loved the band as uh, as I grew up. So there's a lot of yeah. uh, musical interest uh, beyond sort of tracking his story. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's it. I carry a backpack everywhere with all my uh, worldly goods uh, in there, up and down from Connecticut. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's about it. I have, I, I generally travel like in, without uh, with empty pockets because I have a cell phone on me like everybody else. But that's it. I like to be nice and lean on the on the wall, yeah. if you will. Yeah, there's a lot of walking in New York too. So you know, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So where can people find you? Where's the Where's your watering hole online? Like, like where do you hang out the most? Well, I'm all over the pavilion. I'm on email. I'm in Slack. I obviously mm -hmm. I have a work email too. Um, that's where most people are, get, are going to find me. Uh, yeah. obviously we have a web, we have a website, uh, advise well for sure. We'll have a website for the fund, which I'm obviously excited about Ooh, uh, getting going. Yeah. I've always considered myself to be an accessible guy. I'm an action oriented person. If you mm -hmm. need me for something, especially in the villain, I'm always going to give my time. I'm fortunate to be able to do that. I do a ton of meetings every week. If you want Love it. coffee, if you want to meet for a beer, whatever the topic, I'm certainly around and, and make my time available to people. So, um, that's yeah, fantastic. come and, uh, come and seek me out. That's awesome. And guess what, everybody? We'll see you next time. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net.
theme media. Hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Dave Delaney hosts a great podcast called The Nice Podcast. Dave? Tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. Thanks for asking. Uh, the Nice Podcast is all about helping leaders improve the way they communicate with their team members, with their prospects, with their colleagues, everybody. So that's what it's all about. Amazing. Where can people subscribe? The places that you subscribe to podcasts normally. Um, but you can also find the show at marketingpodcast.net, of course. And you can also visit nicepodcast.co. You heard him, folks. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.